I'm a tree, a shake, a shake, a sugar, but you never I like this song. It's one of the first songs that Elvis did when he came out of the army. I'm gonna stick with you. Stick with you. Stick with you. Oh. <laughs> You know, I never, I never really, this was not one of my favorite songs. The performance was great though, right? The performance was good. I thought the performance was great. I, I just was never one of my favorite songs. And I never had that many, obviously, of all the songs that I didn't care about because all of his songs were great. People ask me, what is my favorite, favorite of a song? I mean, his, there, no one sang ballads like he did. And every time I, I pick a song, there's another song that comes mm -hmm. on. So I have to say, pretty There's much. There's different eras in his life where. He, yeah, you know, and you have to remember too, we were so much a part of all the songs that he sang. We knew the moods he was in. Yeah. You know, we knew what he thought about them. We kind of lived those songs with him. But but this one never really made that big of an impression. You know what it did do? It was a great showcase for Ronnie Tut. Oh. Ah, you know. Absolutely. You know, if there were songs that were. You know. Uh, that brought out or highlighted Elvis would be Suspicious Minds. Uh, he did all his karate, right. you know, performances and the there. In the, the break. And again, Ronnie, accentuating. That's right. It. And Tiger Man. And the drums. He went. Ronnie went crazy, and Elvis yeah. loved it. It's so funny when you listen to this. You can see him doing. I still remember I every move he made huh. in this song. You know you're driving on Pacific Coast Highway. <laughs> 2,000 miles from Memphis. Yeah. Wow. My father brought me here in 1963, um, and Elvis convinced my dad that um, uh, I would go to Memphis right. and go to school in Memphis, and everything was taken care of, and I would be totally well chaperoned. My dad came out here to meet Elvis and to make sure everything was going to be on the up and up. Wow. Um, we stayed at the Bel Air Sands, right close to Bel Air, and then the first, the second day we came, he took us out for a nice tour of L.A. And Pacific Coast Highway and around the beach area was one of the first places. And it was amazing. Uh, we had a day like this, and he showed, he was like a tour guide. You know, that's one thing he loved to do, is go out, you know, and show, show people yeah. all the sights yeah. around this area. Not just here, but in Memphis, too, places where he grew up. Mm -hmm. We went to all these places. So Elvis took us for a ride out in the car and took us all through L.A. And Did you come to the ocean? Huh? Yeah, we came here. Oh, wow. We have a lot of pictures from that, which I didn't remember having. My sister discovered them a few months ago. But we came down yeah. here. We went to Chinese uh, Grauman Theater. Uh -huh. We went to Hollywood Boulevard. We went, uh, gosh, all through Bel Air. Sunset? Yeah, on Sunset Boulevard. And he showed us he showed us homes of famous Ruby actors. Yeah. Stuff, yeah, he drove us around the Gold Cadillac. And then the car went on tour without Elvis. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> Is that I amazing? I hope so. That they went took on it tour all around the world without yeah, Elvis. A, Can you imagine a, if he was a in it? Cardboard stand up. <laughs> <laughs> Elvis oh, on we tour. We would have got a free vacation. <laughs> to be Elvis on tour. <laughs> no, the lifestyle was definitely different out here. Obviously. You know, I was captivated by all the sights and yeah. had a lot of energy here. And then to move back to Memphis, it was kind of everything came like to a standstill. <laughs> Especially while Elvis was here, you know, making his movies. And right. I stayed in Memphis and um, literally, you know, spent a lot of time with Grandma. Got to meet her. It's pretty. It was pretty dead at Graceland when Elvis was oh, there. Oh, it? it was. He uh, was. It was a totally different energy. We had one, two, three, four homes here. Yeah. Perugia Way twice, Elvis lived in. Mm -hmm. Bellagio Road. Right. And then Rocker Place, which I really, I hated that house. It wasn't too private, was it? No. But Perugia Way, it wasn't one of the most beautiful houses, but it certainly was private, especially in the back area, not so yeah. much the front. But it's a whole new house now, oh, unfortunately. Wow. Historical things happened here, as you know. Uh, we had the Beatles. This is where the Beatles came. I, I, I never forget that night. No, that was pretty historical. And, you know, I don't think we really appreciated it no. as much then, you know, as it turned out to be. 
later in life. Yeah, it was, you know, it was that period where Elvis was looking for, you know, his career. And here's the Beatles on the top, remember? It was, you know, it was, I think it was a huge deal to the Beatles. Mm -hmm. I think I, th I think we enjoyed it, don't you? Oh yeah, definitely enjoyed. It. I think I think what we enjoyed most about that historical night was how they all interacted with each other, yeah. and how Elvis, you know, pretty much ran the show. I mean, John and Paul, all of them were were pretty very humbled, very nice. Uh, I think that took us all by surprise. Yeah, and Elvis was still his, his same self. He went in the piano, yeah, playing the bass, yeah. And music on, no sound on the TV. No, no, he did what he did every single night. I mean, he didn't make any exceptions. I mean, he was just being Elvis. And that's what he did every night. You know, that was when he was into playing the bass. Right, every right. single night, he'd take out his guitar and put on the music and play bass to it. Paul, Paul McCartney told me later, he said, I knew I was in when I saw Elvis playing the bass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure. But it was a great little jam session. Even though that was a historical night, the intensity that was felt in that room, because I think one of the things that, as much as he, he you know, liked what was happening, because he always felt there was room for everyone, mm -hmm. you know, whether it be Bob Dylan or like the Rolling Stones or, you know, the Beatles, what he admired most was the fact that they had their freedom. They could sing yeah. the songs that, you know, exactly. they wanted to sing. And he, you know, he had that at one time, but he, he, at this point in his life, you know, his songs were not appreciated. No. His songs were not what he wanted to sing. He was, not he was put material. his name on songs that weren't him. Yes. So he he admired the Beatles for, I think, having that having that uh, freedom to mm -hmm. be able to do what they want. And the movies, even that they yeah. want with Hard. Yeah. Remember the Hard Days? He even those. loved. Oh, yeah. we went to see him. He laughed. Yellow submarine. Spring. Right. So, in a way, that was it was it was kind of. Bittersweet. Bittersweet, yeah. yeah. Bittersweet. They even invited you guys over to their house, the, one, the house well, they rented, right? You know, I was walking out, and John Lennon said to me, Jerry, I know Elvis doesn't get out, but we're up on uh, Benedict Canyon. Mm -hmm. I knew the house. Remember, Elvis almost rented that house. Mm -hmm. It had six bedrooms. Mm -hmm. I went up the next day on my motorcycle. I know you did. <laughs> I remember you did. You and a couple of the guys and went I never up. will forget, though. John Lennon was so nice and he was so personable and he said, Jerry, will you do me a favor? And I said, sure. I mean, I, and I was a Beatle fan. Mm -hmm. And he said, I didn't have the nerve to tell Elvis last night. He said, see these sideburns? I said, yeah. yeah. He said, I almost got kicked out of high school because I wanted to look like him. And without him, I would have been nothing. Isn't it funny when you um, hear the stories about John Lennon and how and he was pretty much a free spirit himself mm -hmm. and had definite ideas about political issues and the turmoil that we were, you know, um, living in at the time. He was so shy that night. Yeah. He was so shy. He wasn't Does really... Does that tell the enormity of Elvis? No, it definitely did. Yeah. Elvis was always being Elvis. Yeah. He wasn't trying to impress. He wasn't trying to be any anyone else other than himself. I think that was, you know, that right. was a, a big statement. And I think as he was so casual and approachable. And I think Elvis recognized that quality in the Beatles as well, because mm -hmm. you know what? They were pretty down to they earth. They were very down to know? earth. You know, they had a British sense of humor. and Which Elvis loved. Which right. Elvis loved, right. That was, um, that was a fun time. You remember on, when you guys were moving into the Hillcrest house, remember? Mm -hmm. That was right after we got married. I was pregnant. That's right. And while I was visiting Elvis and Stay Away Joe. Mm -hmm. In uh, Arizona? In Arizona. Yeah, yeah. I was going through the variety and there was an, an ad section there about a home in Truesdale Estates and the way they described it was so beautiful. It was private, it was an unbelievable view of uh, Los Angeles. Boy. I asked Elvis if I could go house hunting, you mm -hmm. know, because we were obviously, you know, um, Especially with the baby with coming. With the baby coming right. along, that's right. So anyway, I went out, took a look at it, and loved it. It was just, it was totally it's furnished. A house. It was beautiful. So he came right after he finished the movie to see the house, fell mm -hmm. in love with it, and he, literally you could move in with a toothbrush. Yeah. 
what is that, like a 180 degree view. Oh. It was unbelievable. Now we felt like we had a home. Right. It was our first home, and now it was more couples. And this is the first home you guys bought in California, It's right? the very first house we bought. We leased all the other, all the other homes. And I remember seeing Lisa at the Hillcrest house with Snoopy and Brutus, oh, and they were yeah. taller than she was. I know, almost taller than me. Yeah, well, that's, what, <laughs> that's understandable. <laughs> <laughs> when was Monteville? When did you find that? Monteville was about um, 60, I would say... 60, maybe 70, 69, yeah, 70. 69, 70. That was a great house. That was my dream house. Three acres of land and just so private it suited Elvis. Neil really Diamond did. was our next door neighbor. Yeah. We never saw him. We never saw Elvis either. It was so guarded. It was just beautiful. It had orange groves. Monteville was the best house. All the memories pop up and you, you know, you have good ones and you have bad ones, but it's certainly each each house had its stage mm -hmm. and there was you can remember everything that was involved mm -hmm. well here's cbs the famous night that elvis was on the ed sullivan show this was obviously before my time here in los angeles but did you watch it well between the cracks of the door why, yes. why, the, why the cracks of the door <laughs> <laughs> i was one of those teenagers that weren't allowed to see it you know it was a big to-do about Elvis being on television at that time. There were all kinds of reactions from, you know, the, the way that he moved with his music. You know, that was a part of him through his own music and his own roots. Right, right. And people misconstrued that whole Elvis aura and energy into, it was too seductive. It was so going to be a whole new generation. Didn't think you see it. <laughs> no, my parents were one of the ones, too, sure. who didn't, who didn't want me to to see him. They didn't know what to expect. It's so hard now to, to look back at that. I know. I mean, what they're singing today and what they're doing today, it's, it's, a, it's just a far cry and a long uh, way from where we were. Yeah, I used to say we were babies compared to what people are doing now, oh, you know, yeah. when the new groups came out and stuff. Um, and it was true. Yeah. I think people overreacted. I, don't, I, didn't know, I didn't think people knew what to do with him. Mm -mm. I really didn't. Looks like we have to go to MGM. We spent a lot of time at this studio. He did, I know. Yeah. You know, I really didn't spend that much time here. You know, Elvis definitely had to have that freedom right. to, you know, do what he did best. And it's almost like bringing your wife to work. You just <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> you know, I did come, come a couple of times. And one of them, when here in Scarum, I dyed his hair. You dyed his hair? Yeah, he, he didn't like the color of his hair, so obviously I was always the first one to say, I can do it. So <laughs> I went to the drugstore and I got uh, black dye. It looked pretty easy to me, right? Yeah. So you go and get your black dye, and I got brushes, you know, so I could you know, brush it on. I, uh -huh. And I um, went yeah. to the studio with a bag. I mean, I took it very seriously. I got a black <laughs> bag, and I had uh, a towel and brushes and the black dye. And here I come in like a real professional. I mean, I took it, I took it quite now seriously. Now I know why I wore the turban. <laughs> 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 you know I, what? You I, might I thought be it was right. an image. He was trying to cover up that you hair. You might be right. <laughs>